All right, I'm at U-Haul picking up a trailer. We're gonna test this bad boy out. We're gonna see how this Ford Maverick does with the trailer. I don't know if you can tell, but it is pouring down snow here in Boulder, Colorado, which I cannot wait to get out of. Don't get me wrong, I love the snow, it's beautiful, but I can't handle all the liberal juice. So I threw together this rack for my Maverick really quick because unfortunately at the time of me recording this video, there aren't very many options available for Ford Mavericks. I'm actually one of the first people to have a Maverick at all. More on the rack to come. All right, well, we are moving from Colorado. Colorado, it's been cool in a kind of crappy way, but uh, I got the Maverick all packed up. I'll, uh, yeah, show you what you got. All right, so I'm gonna talk about these tires real quick. Um, they suck. So uh, this is the second grade. There's three levels of tires that they offer on this. They have a, a road, they have like an all-terrain, and then they have this like legit all-terrain or whatever. The legit all-terrain is the Falcon Wild Peak, which if you have the opportunity to upgrade to Falcon Wild Peak, do it because this was stupid. I hate these things. These are Ferrelli Scorpions and they're garbage. They're supposed to be an all-terrain tire. They suck. They're like okay for the snow. But I think that's mainly because the um, the four wheel drive, all wheel drive uh, feature is so good. But honestly, like the actual tires themselves is pretty garbage. There's a good bit of slippage that happens that's not necessary at all. Just to kind of show you, I mean, these are freaking brand new. I have like 2,000 miles on this truck. But you can see how round and almost seemingly bald they just like start off, right? I'm very unimpressed with this. Typically, I think a Ferrelli is a really high end brand, but these Scorpions are garbage. But I'm not opinionated at all, so that's good. All right, so I got a whole bunch of stuff on the roof rack. I got a header rack and then a uh, bed rack that's fully loaded. That is a latch that's actually going to, um, this thing here will flop down. All right, and then I got it attached to a little U-Haul, a little rinky-dinker. Fortunately for my actual driving, the roads have cleared up a lot, so I'm very thankful for that. So I am pulling my trailer right now through the Arapaho National Forest. We are moving from Colorado the Denver area to Salt Lake City area, and we're gonna be stopping through Moab, Utah on the way there. I am super stoked about it, and this truck sucks at towing. It's pretty bad. Um, I, okay, I say that, I gotta give a caveat here. I just drove through 11,000 feet elevation, which is pretty freaking high, and I was trying to change lanes and get past this one guy, and I was absolutely flooring it, and I have it in the icy road setting because it really seems to make a difference. If you are living somewhere where it's cold and it snows a lot, the icy, uh, they have a slippery setting on this thing. And the icy slippery setting is a game changer. It makes a huge difference. I was always like, whatever, just drive better. But uh, no, it really makes a big difference on the way that you can actually grip and the way that it allows you to feather the, the brake and to feather the transmission as needed. So. I'm driving, uh, about to pass through Breckenridge. I'm driving on my way to Moab, and I was trying to get around this guy, and I had to pedal down all the way on the floor, and I'm sitting here, so my ears are popping. I'm, sorry, I'm trying to figure out like why the heck this thing isn't going. I'm like, what is the deal? I got it up to 42 miles an hour with my foot all the way down and could not get it to go any faster, and I was like, what's the deal? Granted, I have to give this caveat, 11,000 feet, and I was going uphill while doing that. All right, just stopped off at a gas station real quick in uh, Frisco, Colorado to uh, load this sucker up because good gracious, it's awful with gas while towing. It's like, I, I think it's normally like 25 miles per gallon and while towing right now, I've been getting freaking 17 or something like that, which is, I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm driving through Vail currently, and I've noticed something really interesting. I'll flip it around so you can kind of see the slopes as I drive by. Something that I think is kind of interesting is I have actually, so the roads have been really well groomed as you can see. Which is awesome because I've been able to keep the setting set to uh, the tow and haul setting on the Maverick. What's really been interesting about that is that it has made a massive difference on the gas mileage. I'm already up three miles per gallon from putting it on this tow haul package or uh, setting and it seems like in general the car just doesn't have to work as hard. When it needs the power, it gets the power. Uh, not like a ton of power, don't get me wrong. But when it's supposed to be uh, like just going flat, it just levels it out. So overall it seems like it's way more efficient across the board and this is kind of interesting. 
They may be onto something here. Okay, so the tow boat on this thing is really intriguing. When I'm going downhill, I'm at 10,500 feet elevation right now. When I'm going downhill, the transmission automatically goes into a lower, slightly lower gear. It just does it on its own. I can go into a manually go into a lower gear. It has like sensors that evaluate the rate, the uh, grade. And if I'm going downhill, you hear it gear down. It essentially help me maintain and, and, and uh, establish control over the trailer while I'm hauling. When I'm going uphill, you hear it gear down again so that I can have the, the power that it needs to pull back uphill because it's got no power without it. So I'm, I, that's kind of cool. I'm, I'm kind of impressed with that. So when I switched it over to the towing setting or whatever they have on there, it made a huge difference. Um, I'm gonna say though, it's still pretty, it's still pretty rough. There, this is not a truck you get if you are wanting to tow. This thing is great for in town, great for payload. If you want to load this sucker down, great. I got this. I, mean, I got a crap ton of stuff on this thing, which probably needs to be factored into the total towing. To be honest, I'm probably being unfair, but it's still just substantially pathetic so i'm just like come on get it together get it together car come on in total my assessment on this truck is essentially that if you are looking to haul horses or big heavy stuff it's just not going to make any sense for you to have a small truck like this but pretty much anything else that you would pull me as a general contractor i'm often pulling trailers loaded down with lumber and they can be ginormous as i build pergolas and patios and decks and this thing would be just fine it would have no trouble pulling that kind of thing uh, most of you're in town, if you were taking dirt bikes to a show or to a race, you'd have no trouble with it. So for the most part, primarily any use that a standard homeowner is going to need out of this thing is going to be no problem. Now, as soon as you get into horses or boats or RVs, you're screwed and this is just not, not an option for you at all. Well, we made it to Salt Lake City. So my wife drove the Ford Transit and she's telling me that she was at 16.8 on her gas mileage. Well, I was at 17.3 in this thing. So hands down in the future, I will 100% be towing with the Ford Transit. Now, as a contractor, I have to say, I do feel, I do feel better knowing that it's capable. It went through a blizzard, it went through the desert, it went through mountains. I do feel like it's capable. Should I need to tow something or should I be on a job site or need to pull, you know, a whole bunch of wood, like you know, 100 pieces of like two by four by 16s. Um, I have no question that it'll get to, to and from the job site really well without any problems. But um, if I were to have a pick, it would definitely be a bigger truck for purpose of towing. But you know that going into it, you just have to know that going into it. You're not buying this thing for the towing capability. You're buying it because you want something that's small, nimble. It's fun to drive. It's functional. Man, I can't say enough the gas mileage. My name's Mark. I'm a husband, father, outdoor enthusiast, handyman, and fitness professional. I've seen too many people passively sit on the sidelines as life passes them by. My mission is to empower people to dream dreams for their family and follow through.